Okay, um, finally getting around to working on a 1361, getting it ready for the uh, summer season coming up at the end of uh, April, which is uh, usually we have our boiler testing day the end of April last weekend, but this year it's Easter, so we're having it the following weekend, which is May 1st. So trying to get it ready for May 1st. Uh, last, the end of last season, we had a problem with the throttle. Uh, Flange, there's a flange, there's a flange between the uh, dry pipe and then where it goes into the um, the uh, throttle, and it was very difficult to tighten it. And I didn't get the bolts always that tight. There's a lot of issues with it. I had to make a smaller flange because originally I had a a coil in here for the um, feed water heater, which I removed because I don't need the axle pump. And in mentioning axle pumps, believe me, guys, this is a uh, an antiquated thing. Axle pumps are antiquated. You do not need them in this scale. Now a small engine, maybe 8 inch boiler, smaller boilers, yeah. But on the bigger stuff, you need two good injectors. Spend the money, good injectors. We had nothing but problems and I know there's going to be somebody out there that's going to tell me they never had a problem, but they don't realize that that axle pump is, is um, mechanically a disaster. It has that real short stroke on, on some engines and it, 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 it leaks, there's a lot of leakage, there's a lot of problems with it. It's a constant maintenance issue. We took it off uh, start of the third season and we haven't replaced it and I never got around to taking the coil out of there. So I got the coil out of there now because dirt gets behind it and everything. It's a real pain in the neck. So, um, that's been removed, and now I can, was able to make a much bigger flange that you could see. And then, of course, the, the mate to it here. And a uh, silicon rubber o ring that's uh, about an inch and a sixteenth in diameter, about seven, three quarters, seven fifty in the middle, and about three sixteenths thick. It's real thick silicon rubber o ring. It's good for 500 degrees temperature. And I've got an o ring groove up inside here. I'm going to put that in there and clamp everything together with 1032 bolts, eight of them, all stainless of course, tighten that right up and that should uh, call, uh, uh, correct the problem. I thought about putting a union in there, a stainless steel regular pipe union. Um, I thought well maybe the vibration, you know that thing going down the track, boom, 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 bouncing all the time and, it, and it, they loosen up. So I got to make sure that I had the bolts real tight, lock washers on them and everything. And I believe that that should be um, should be correcting it. The other problem I had, and it really wasn't a problem, but I decided to make them bigger. I, I used these um, three. This is three eighths OD tubing, and uh, I just felt it was a little too small. So I'm going to use some half inch stuff that I've made up here. You know, that's going to go. Uh, um, in there, I'm going to sore solder all together. I might have a little bit of a problem trying to get it out, but the way I have it set up there, but I'll figure that out later. But in any event, I've got that damn coil out of there, and I'm going to an inch, a bigger size pipe. Which the, the OD, the ID of the pipe is 400 plus thousandths, where the other one was 300 plus thousandths, and I'm gaining about 25% in volume, which probably even computes out to more than that. I don't know, but it's 25 cent larger. So it's going to give a little bit more response to the throttle. When we pull the throttle out, it, the engine picks up slowly and then goes faster. So I'm thinking, well, you don't have that intermediate response. And sometimes when you're pulling a heavy load and you get to a grade, you want to give it a little more juice and you ain't got that response you want to get. You know, it kind of stalls a little bit and then it goes. So I think what I'll do now is I'll hook it up and get it all put together. And then you can see how, how it looks all put together. All right. um, Getting ready to silver solder now. Got everything all lined up in here. And um, the oxygen acetylene, you need to use that. You can't do it without this. I mean, you could try propane, but I doubt it. And uh, when you light this up, well, first of all, I wanted to mention that I'm in the habit over the years of turning the gas and oxygen off when I'm done using it immediately because the tanks almost all the time have leaks in them 
and you get distracted and you go away, you think you're going to come back and first thing you know you go home, have your dinner, two days later you come back and there's no gas and no offset. So uh, I've gotten into the habit of shutting those things off when I'm done and it's a good idea anyway. Alright, so now I'm going to light it up. Always, obviously you turn it away from me, you don't burn yourself. And uh, turn on the, whoop, pull it out. Try it again. Wow, look at that! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Alright, so you turn it on and then you turn on the oxygen. And you want to, you want to, uh, a very small flame. You don't need a lot on this because we're doing something very thin. And it, believe me, it just takes practice. That's all there is to it. There's no other way to do it but to, just to practice. So I'm going to silver solder this now. Unfortunately, my camera 2, I think, is shot. So we're not going to get this on camera 2. I'll try it. I'll see. I'll put it on again. My camera person sitting over here. Maybe she could, uh, maybe she could hit the button for me if it, if it does it. All right. It's on now. We'll see if it's going to work. I'm going to start up here, and I do it, uh, I hold the solder in my right hand and hold the torch in my left hand. Uh, I don't know where to start, we'll just start here. Yeah, see it shut off. Check with that camera. Alright, now you just got to watch it starts to change color, then you know it's ready. Of course, yeah, okay. Dude, where's your goggles? I don't wear them because I can't see, guys. So, I don't be burning up the house. All right, now, I'm going to solder it. I'm going to get it all soldered and, fi and uh, packed in, so to speak. And then I'm going to take this apart and make sure that the solder is run all the way around and there's no... Now... This is what's called a quick opening gate valve. I've mentioned it many times in my videos. If you guys out there want to continue to use the ball valve, worst case scenario, you want to keep using it, go right ahead. Everybody says, yeah, I use them. They're awful. Just awful. You got a 90 degree open to close. 90. You want to see what I got? Watch. That's closed right now. That's open. Full open. That's full closed. Much more control. I go back there. I, I don't have much stroke here. I don't need a lot of stroke. I got double leverage back there so that when you pull it, you, you can pull it about halfway and you're only getting about that much. Let's see, that's halfway right there. So you have, you know, a lot of control. You just matter of fact to how you set the throttle up down the other end. But it's only, what, 20 degrees, 15, 20 degrees open to close, 90 degrees on a ball valve. Remember that. You want to keep using a ball valve? Go right ahead. Bad news. Okay, um, I removed the piping from inside the smoke box, so now I could solder on the back side. I got the whole side front front of it soldered, and it's very carefully you have to solder it without moving the parts. So it's a little tricky, so you got to very carefully play the heat on there on the one side, and hopefully it doesn't loosen up. Um, and uh, we'll get it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. By the way, the time I Finished this and took everything apart and shut my uh, gas off the dock here. That was in the hose ran out. So you see? Oops. Now I'm going to go a small flame because I don't want to heat this up too much. A little small, tiny, tiny flame like that. So there goes. Now I, I do it with my right hand. I usually hold it down this way like this by the hoses. And we start off. Start off with this elbow. It's already been flucked, so this is oxidized. Is that doubt? Uh, Every time you got to be patient with it. Now be patient.
Hear that? That's the flux inside the pipe. All right, well, got all silver soldered up. Looks pretty good. The problem is, the way I have this set up, it probably should have come out this way and down, but there's not a lot of room in this particular smoke box. So, decided to make it this way. Connect this to the throttle just lightly. You know, on the throttle <coughs> here, basically like. In fact, I'm going to put a little, little 600W on there on the thread so everything runs smoothly and uh, doesn't hurt, you know. Put some oil in there. 600W won't hurt nothing. Goes in there anyway. And just uh, screw this together. put some oil on these furl nuts because um, they're going to be turning in there and you want to uh, just give it a little bit of oil. The oil's not going to hurt nothing. Now I'm ready to put the o-ring and everything together inside here. All in one shot. The big problem is, not a problem, but just a th something to solve to get the o-ring to get a new one. By the way, I got these from a master car and I made a uh, drawing that I followed. They're made out of 660 bronze, two flanges, got a one inch hex on the back so I can tighten it up. And I have to use a crow's foot, if you know what a crow's foot is. It's a crow's foot. Get on the back side. <laughs> 